You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping Raw from November 13th. Sorry, I was out of uh, position. There you go. All right. So yeah, this was the Go Home Show to Survivor Series. The Raw Go Home Show. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, because it's a, a dual branded pay-per-view. The only time of year when SmackDown and Raw goes head to head. You don't say. <laughs> That's you're, the you're first time of I've year? heard yeah, that. I figured that. That that should have been the uh, official drinking game of uh, the Road to Survivor series. How many times do they say that? <laughs> Take a shot every time they say it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> they really beat oh, yeah. that horse with every, that one. And even they had the, some of the wrestlers saying it uh-huh. in their promos as yep. well. Yep. It's like, whew. But, uh, it's yeah. Been, it's bad enough that Kurt Angle and Shane said it over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But surprisingly, for a go-home show, it was very good. Yeah, it's true. It would, um, well, I think they weren't completely finished getting everything set up. situated. Well, yeah, that's yeah. that's the nice thing. It felt like this one, or this year, what they did was they did a slow burn. Mm-hmm. Whereas last year, I believe, they kind of like made the teams right away, and then it was yeah, a lot something of... Like that. A lot of, uh, like, a lot of, like, just conflict between the two teams, mm-hmm. which kind of... Yeah, well, kinda, no, you just had that one point where they got face-to-face, right? No. They, like, Was they kind of invaded week? almost every week for no. a few weeks. I don't remember. I, I believe it started closer to the pay-per-view mm-hmm. than this time, but it was, like, a lot more the same thing over yeah. and over oh, okay. again. Yeah, okay, yeah. Maybe you're right. Because I, I, I think when the initial oh, uh, under siege thing happened, it was like, like, are they going to do it the way they did it last year again or something yeah. like that? No, no, they did it really well this year. Uh, it was definitely well paced. Yeah. That's for sure. But. Um. Anyway, uh, Raw opens with the video package pretty much going over everything that's happened since TLC, basically. Yeah um smackdown attacking raw mm. um and their inability to retaliate basically yep pretty um, much the thing with daniel bryan and kane and all that stuff mm-hmm. which yeah we haven't seen daniel bryan technically since then yeah but besides him getting chokeslammed by kane yeah <laughs> um anyway the show uh actually opens with stephanie mcmahon coming out mm-hmm. um and then she introduces kurt angle yes um and so she, she want- just basically ran Kurt into oh, the ground at yeah. this point. Kurt Angle uh, was made to look like a fool, mm-hmm. um, which, in all fairness, technically he kind of was a fool because you it's know it's just the uh, the commissioner role. Well, yeah, <laughs> but specifically in this case, he literally didn't react to anything. No, it was similar um, to what she did with Foley. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But um, she wants to know how the New Day got in last week mm. because they snuck in through the crowd or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then... You guys said you were ready for another attack, but yeah. here they they just showed up. Yep. How did they get in, uh-huh. Kurt? And then uh, she, she's not happy with her choice or his choice for the uh, fifth member of Team Raw. You brought in your son Mm -hmm. and they got john cena Mm -hmm. do you see why i'm angry here kurt the 16 time (laughs) world champion john cena they said that every time i mentioned him too and he's like so she's like what are you gonna do in the match or the first first thing you're gonna do right Mm -hmm. we're gonna break shane's ankle hurt this isn't the 90s which is funny because he had most of his success in the 2000s he did (laughs) but you know it was an easy thing to say 20 years ago. I know. So. It's just funny. Yeah. Um, anyway, she uh, she discredits his idea. Mm. And then... Uh, right. She said that she wanted him to uh, basically decapitate Shane. <laughs> Bring oh, him. She, want, she wants his head on a platter. <laughs> like, wow, Shane's almost done that himself. Mm-hmm. So uh, as long as he's in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so anyway... She said, uh, after she said she wants Shane's head on a platter, she has no choice, and then the shield comes out. Mm-hmm. So I guess she was going to fire him? Or... Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she was, about, I guess, about to fire him. Yeah, because I had heard that from, like, people's opinions of the stuff. I didn't think that's what she was going to yeah, do. Yeah, I thought like... she was going to replace somebody. I thought that's what she was oh, going okay. for. I don't, I don't know, but I, I figured that she was going to fire him, even though she said that 
if you don't win, then it'll be yeah, your that, job. Yeah, that's, so. that's why I, was, I didn't even think that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, the Shields music hits. They come in through the crowd. They surround the ring like they normally do. Leave our dad alone, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think Dean uh, starts starts the talking, and he says, and basically kind of just endorses Kurt mm-hmm. Angle. And then uh, the Roman grabs right, and then uh, oh, Stephanie was, was. Did Stephanie start and say, "Where the hell have you been?" Well, right? yeah, she said that to to Roman, and, and then she's then he was like, "Where the hell have you been?" Yeah, in six months, and, and then they had a little back and forth with uh, her going through the table at WrestleMania and everything. Yeah, oh, so yeah, Seth was kind of tiptoeing around it. Yeah, because uh, Seth, he didn't, Roman didn't want to get Seth in trouble, <laughs> so she's like, "Because Triple H caused you mm. to fall into the table." Yep. Um, but yeah, she uh, she also asks where their tag team titles mm-hmm. are because Kurt caught them because they, right. he let the New Day. Yeah. So it is kind of funny, though, because you'd think that Stephanie wouldn't care about Seth losing the title yeah. because of their history. No, 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 yeah, Her, yeah, him yeah. and Roman. Ah, uh, you know, continuity. So, you know, it's not a thing. No. Um, anyway. So uh, after after that, Roman says that this is this is our yard or my yard and blah blah blah, and that we choose what we want to do, mm-hmm. and we want to challenge the New Day. So they officially challenge the New Day for uh, a, a six man tag at uh, Survivor oh. Series, and uh, so yeah, that was that. That was uh, I thought it was a decent opening. Yeah, um, for I guess mm-hmm. long winded authority figure promos at the beginning of a yeah of a raw that's definitely good yeah but anything with the probably shield, what, a 20 no. minute segment you figure yeah, about that yeah but anything with the shield at this point in time is gonna be yeah good and over and uh want to note that obviously when reigns was on the microphone he was getting cheered yes however by himself again don't know um but i, I think it would be smart for the WWE, obviously, when they're ready to do their own thing again, uh-huh. have them just allies. Yes, and I you think know, you'll I, have random six-man tags where all of them will mm-hmm. meet up again and do. It would be smart to do it that way because that's the only way you're gonna continue to have success. Earlier, like when he had his first um, title reign, mm-hmm. people had suggested teaming with the Usos. Yeah, just have them do that with Dean and Seth. Yeah, right. Instead of them and all three of them well you kind of had that when you had aj in the club but that was a very short amount of time that right I, a yeah. lot of people wanted that like a long and term thing was already yeah 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 so Built if you up. just have the three of them as known accomplices mm-hmm. or known associates because i don't they really don't do that that very often though there's not yeah. a lot of times where if you're like a team or not a team that you can just occasionally because like the miz Sheamus, and cesaro right now mm-hmm. are kind of like a like a team right well it's but, just because they're with the shield exactly yeah, if so it wasn't for the so shield, they wouldn't be together six yeah. months from now even if they're on the same show you'll never see a point in time where they'll just randomly mm-hmm. team together that's true so but yeah so moving on we get to the first match of the night and it is to determine the fifth member of the raw women's team yes so we have a triple threat <laughs> between dana brooke Mickey James and Bailey. Yeah. So um, the big rumor going around was that Paige was apparently supposed to be the fourth person in this match mm-hmm. and was supposed to win because apparently she was seen at Raw beforehand. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that maybe they were gonna she was gonna come out and it was just gonna make it a, mm-hmm. a fatal four way, right. or she would replace somebody because mm-hmm. like. But I guess they wanted it to be more of a surprise, so they probably just because everybody knew it was and she was tweeting well, on yeah 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 the there's Twitter. a lot of there's a lot of speculation yeah although i have an idea i do we'll probably have the same yeah idea. probably yeah. and it makes sense yes um anyway that that'll be on our next video mm-hmm. i'm assuming right yes yeah. okay so um anyway captain fox uh-huh. wearing her even bigger captain's hat mm-hmm. leads uh the rest of team raw down to the ring to right. watch yes. this all, match all four of the other women yes. were out there and uh so match gets underway. It was a decent match for what it was. Hey, it wasn't bad. No. It wasn't but, very uh, long. No. But if Dana Brooke, got, I guess she got knocked out of the ring, right? Yeah. She, and Asuka goes to help her up, and then she kind of, oh, she takes she a swing punch at it. Yeah. She punched Asuka, and then Asuka's like, uh-uh. Oh, and she, what, chased her around the ring? And yeah. Hits, uh, hit hits a round her. Cast, a roundhouse kick, that's right. Yep. And then at this point in time, Bailey and uh, Mickey, Mickey go were back like, and forth, yeah. And uh, they both go for pinfalls. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, Mickey goes for the DDT or the Mick DDT or whatever the hell she calls it. And then yeah. she goes for, uh, but Bailey is able to counter with the Bailey to belly, mm-hmm. and then she uh, pins her. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. Now, Bailey, uh, which we kind of figured, assuming the page thing not be a factor, was right. going to be the case anyway. So. Yeah. No, it made all the sense in the world. Uh huh. Um, um, and then uh, after the match, all of Team Raw goes into the ring and, and they, they stand all, together yep. united. Mm-hmm. So. They're doing a lot of, um, like, strong team building Bonds, booking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is the complete opposite of what they were going for last year. Mm-hmm. Last year, they had a lot of... Well, I think that's why they're hammering the fact that it's the only time that we're on SmackDown. Go ahead. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. uh, last year, it was a lot of, like, okay, we don't like each other, but we're teaming together. Right. This year, it's like, okay, we need, we have a job to do. Let's... Let's do what we have to right. do. No, even that makes sense. And put our, our things aside. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot more crossing each other last year than there is now. Right. So, um, so then yeah. we get a cruiserweight tag match. Yes. Which, uh, when was the last time we saw Enzo in the first hour? <laughs> uh, it's been a while. Yeah, that's what I thought. Also, the women don't normally open the first hour either. No, that's true. So, But yeah, we got uh, Enzo and Drew Gulak versus Kalisto and Tozawa. Uh-huh. Drew Gulak's still my favorite cruiserweight. Oh my god, he's so good. <laughs> he's fantastic <laughs> on the mic. And which is, which is so funny because he he's so he's so bland. bland. <laughs> but it just comes off so funny. Yeah. Um but yeah, Enzo does his how you doing? And mm-hmm. he's like, I am, am doing, doing well. well. <laughs> and uh, then yeah, and then the crowd starts going. He'd be like, I join in, but I'm not I don't agree with chance or yes. something like that. Oh, it was, uh, it he was, just has the best character. It's, and it's just so funny because he went from generic heel cruiserweight mm-hmm. to with the fantastic the most, entrance music. With the to the like just the most ridiculous. No, it's not, not even every, the most yeah. ridiculous. He's just is the best acted, He's supposed to be like he's the best a, acted character. Yeah, he's just like a politician basically well yeah that's what he's yeah. been going yeah. for lately because he wants the he wants a better 205 live <laughs> so uh, he's just fantastic he, he really, he, yeah he's really done wonders for himself but as, as, as soon as um as soon as drew is able or given the chance to talk by enzo Kalisto and uh akira mm-hmm. tozawa will come yep. out to interrupt him together um well you know we it's don't have loot, time for two entrances. we don't have time for four entrances we just have two it's true so it's too um, bad we didn't get a powerpoint presentation though yeah it's a shame yeah his powerpoint presentations are great Always. so you said something about him having like a twitter <laughs> thing with uh the revival yeah and i was, I was scrolling through his twitter and uh he, he said something about okay so next week i'm definitely gonna have my uh 399 page powerpoint yeah. presentation on two yeah because he posted up the uh no fly zone uh sign. picket sign and then uh the, I don't know. I think it was Dash that commented with their shirts. It said "No flips, just fists." And I guess Drew Gulak said, "Yeah, boys, keep fisting" or something like that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. But yeah, this was a decent enough match for uh, for the cruiserweights on Raw. Yeah. Um, Enzo ends up getting the win with the uh, Jordanzo. Yeah. Well, what Not happened was. Um... <laughs> So Tozawa, like, jumps on the top rope, and Kalisto does a suicide dive. Oh, no, the other way around. Um, uh, Kalisto jumps, like, on the top rope, and he's, like, kind of just standing on the ropes, and then Tozawa goes between his legs and does a suicide dive. Oh, that's right, yeah, that that was a pretty good spot. Yeah, Um, and then that left, I believe, Enzo in the ring, and then Tozawa goes for a, uh, what's it called? Uh, He goes for a senton on Enzo. Yep, and then uh, and then Gulak grabs Enzo, pulls him out of the ring, and then Tozawa like gets distracted with him mm. or by him, and then he gets it with the Jordzando at think, that point. Yeah, yeah it was, it was very like a little that. a little uh, a little confusing. Yeah, but I believe that's how it went. Mm-hmm. Um, and we uh, go backstage, and Kurt Angle's there with the uh, men's team, I guess from yes. Raw. And, uh, you know, he basically says that we have to be a cohesive unit tonight. Because mm-hmm. um, this so. is the only time of the year that blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we get 
later on tonight, we're going to have Finn and Joe versus Gallows and Anderson. Mm -hmm. And Jason Jordan is going to face a returning Bray Wyatt. Yes. He is the most dangerous and sadistic person mm -hmm. that he's ever seen or something like yep. that. And then he goes to make a match for Braun, and Braun's like, I want Kane. <laughs> so I don't think that's a good idea, yeah. Braun. I, I want, want Kane. Kane. <laughs> <laughs> so Angle ends up making the main event yes. later on in the evening. For Kane a... versus Braun. I, I, like, I know how, obviously we know how it ended, but I... I... Oh, I figured we were going to read through and figure out how it ended. <laughs> yes, but I'm just saying, that, that was... At the time of the match being mm -hmm. made, I'm like, why would that be the main event? But whatever. <laughs> All right, so uh, up next we got the Miz TV mm -hmm. with Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, basically, all they do is run down the Usos and SmackDown in general. Yep. It was really not that nothing new. Nah. Um, I believe that Miz was talking about Baron Corbin as well and all the that. The bathroom stuff. break. Yes. And uh, so yeah. Also, um, I, I guess the WWE had put up a video with The Miz saying that Baron Corbin and John Cena have something in common. Mm -hmm. They couldn't see him because he wasn't on SmackDown last week. <laughs> so Okay. It makes sense. Yeah. Well, it was That's obviously funny. much more long-winded yeah, yeah, yeah. than that, but it's it, it's funny. And yeah. it kind of it kind of made having that match with Sin Cara and again, Baron Corbin kind of a waste of time. Yeah. It's like, obviously, it's mm -hmm. going to be the Miz and Baron Corbin, the way they've been building that. Right, right, right. Um, and then we got an announcement, I guess, because of Twitter. The New Day had accepted uh, the Shields Challenge. Yeah, I think Xavier Woods said something about them eating dog poop. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, I think all, all three of them the, had something to say. Oh, yeah, the three of them both yeah. had long responses. Which isn't I, a huge surprise. The one I remember was the one with uh, Xavier Woods with the dog poop. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so then we uh, go to the Jason Jordan versus Bray Wyatt. Man. Yes. Vanilla ice cream versus Bray Wyatt. <laughs> I'm just... It's tough, man. Uh, I feel bad for the kid. That's true. It's He's in a crappy situation. He really is. Because he's getting put over when he hasn't really earned it yet, and the fans really don't respond to him. Which I yet. understand. It makes yeah. sense, but that's... You know, maybe they're... Maybe they know what they're doing here. No. Maybe. No. Okay. Somebody's <laughs> got to have a positive outlook on things. Yeah, I guess, but they don't know yeah, what oh, they're doing. Oh. All right, we'll, we'll they, discuss it a little later on. Hey. Um, <laughs> so uh, Jason Jordan has been doing this thing where he picks up people and just runs them into mm -hmm. things. <laughs> and apparently Bray Wyatt's a little heavier than Elias Sampson. Mm -hmm. Or Elias. Because <laughs> he was really struggling getting them over, uh, mm -hmm. all over the place. Which you would think somebody who was sick would have lost some weight. You'd think that, yeah. but because Roman did look a little skinnier, I guess. Yeah. It, but he's always kind of like bulky, you know. not bulky. Uh, well, I, like tr like not not thin, yeah. but like slender. Guess I guess for a big I guy, I thought he was kind of stocky. I don't know. No, I, I've never I've never characterized him no. as as like thick. It's well, just no. he's he's strong, thick AF. Yes. <laughs> um. So. But yeah, so Jason Jordan eventually gets the win after I think uh, Bray was attempting a sister Abigail and Jason Jordan was able to roll him up. Yeah, right? this is very abrupt. Yeah, it, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, he uh, he controlled the majority of the match. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then um, at some point, I guess Wyatt had he I thought he went for like a like maybe a suplex, but Jason Jordan evaded it and landed weird on his knee. Oh, did he? So he's like hobbling around. And oh, then, okay. Well, well, that would make sense. Yeah. And then after the match, um, Bray Wyatt attacks him mm -hmm. because he's not happy that he lost. <clears throat> and then he works the knee, and then I guess Jason Jordan is now injured. Thank and... you, Wyatt. Yes, that was going on, <laughs> yes. Um, because obviously the fans aren't big fans of Jason True. Jordan. True. So. But yeah, after that, I guess they go to a commercial. They come back, and they're in the trainer's room. Mm-hmm. Uh, Angle questions whether or not Jason Jordan can compete, and he's like, "Well, you you competed with like broken uh, like a broken neck and blah blah blah," yeah. and uh, so Kurt's like, "But I need you at a hundred one hundred percent." Yeah, my like, job is on the line. Yeah, so, I don't even think he said that though, did he? No, he didn't. No. And then um, Kurt might help hammer the point home. Yeah, good. <laughs> Kurt Kurt is a little indecisive. You can see it in his face, and then it kind of just. 
goes to the next part. Yep. And we got a Brock Lesnar. Well, a Paul Heyman promo with yeah. Brock Lesnar standing there awkwardly jumping around. Yep. That's what he does. Um. So yeah, he Heyman came out and he had five points or for five reasons, reasons to buy or to watch Survivor Series on Sunday. Yeah. To subscribe to the WWE mm-hmm. Network. Yep. And. uh Basically, they're all because of the Brock and AJ match. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, obviously. But yeah, no. There's he, nothing else that matters. Which isn't a surprise here, but he put over AJ mm-hmm. a lot. Um, and he even said, you know, speed kills, and AJ definitely is much quicker than Brock Lesnar. It's true. And that's, <laughs> I guess during this, uh, someone had proposed in the yeah. crowd, and then you heard a she said yes chant. And I was then, trying to figure out what the chant yeah. was, and then Heyman. Heyman said, oh, well, she only said yes because she's never been face-to-face with a beast like Brock Lesnar, which is so good. Yeah. Oh, Paul is, is very good on his uh, his toes. He, he told the crowd that they should know better than try to interrupt mm-hmm. a Paul Heyman promo. <laughs> um, but yeah, it kind of... I guess allude to this being a Rocky like situation where AJ is the underdog, but mm-hmm. he will not win. Yeah. Um but this kind of it, it kinda went on a little bit. It was it was too long. Yeah. But it wasn't bad. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of a lot of Paul Heyman's promos have been a lot of very samey. Yeah. Oh well, um, yeah. But, but he, it, I mean he always delivers so so yeah. well. It, so, it, yeah. it was it was nice having a subject that people can actually care about now. Yeah. It's been a and while. There, Again, this wasn't something you needed to build. No. Well, it was like, okay, we have one opportunity to build this match. <clears throat> but, you know. But again, it's, it's just tr- like Finn and AJ. You didn't need to build it. Yeah. It's just. It just. Yeah. Just put it on the table. So. Yes. You need to take advantage of having AJ here. Yes. This, like Paul Heyman said, this could be the only time you ever see this match. That's true. But that's mostly because they're on separate shows, and Brock Lesnar's not going to be around for much longer, and even if he was, he Mm -hmm. doesn't wrestle that often. It's starting to sound like a Lesnar problem, not an AJ problem. (laughs) Yeah, that is true. (laughs) That is true. All right, so uh, up next we got The Shield versus The Miz and The Bar. Yep. So it's the first time that the the original Shield... Wrestled together in what two years? Three, three years, years. Three years. I yeah. don't like that they keep on referring to them as the original Shield, the OG. Yeah, because I guess that insinuates that oh. house shows are now canon. Oh yeah. On top of even Samoa Joe got in there. And yeah. Because <laughs> even because the Kurt Angle with mm-hmm. the one off, yep, like then... he, they never said that he was part of the Shield, no. but on the house shows they were saying it's like, oh, they're. Well, they kind of alluded that he was like an honorary member. In the yeah, beginning. I know, but they literally said I, that at the house shows. I know. So, because Triple H and Samoa Joe had taken part mm-hmm. in. Uh, well, I think Samoa Joe just helped with the triple power bomb. But that was it. yeah, you know, but he's still, still yes, taking yes. part with the, the I guess the theme. Mm-hmm. So um, anyway, they uh, they have a, a match. It's, it was well, a well, decent enough match. Yeah, um, <laughs> Miz ran away. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, so I guess Seamus and Cesaro were taken out and the, the shield went after the Miz. Mm-hmm. And the well, Miz the Miz just, came back, right? And attacked yeah, the, Roman? No, well, no, the, the Miz, the Miz was getting surrounded by the three of them. Right. And then that's when he that ran was away. when he ran away. Yeah, right. They cut back from commercial and the Miz is the one in the ring. Oh, okay. That's what it was. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's, that's strange, but okay. I guess he came back. Um, but yeah, the shield hits... The triple power bomb on the Miz for the win. Yes, not a surprise here. Yeah, Sheamus and Cesaro had been taken out with suicide dives on the outside by Dean and Seth, mm-hmm. and then the three of them, like you said, took care of the Miz. Interestingly enough, I know I'm jumping ahead a little. Hmm. There's only one person who, a- after well, barring the last five minutes of SmackDown, mm-hmm. um, actually looked bad coming out of these last two shows, and it was the Miz. Everybody else looked fine. Yeah. Or good. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of the win- all the champions, minus him, won their matches. Mm-hmm. And um and then the shield obviously looked good because they destroyed him. Right. So it's just kind of funny that like I said, besides that one match, he was the only right, yeah, yeah, competing yeah. person who actually yeah, did because. look good mm-hmm. going into the pay per view. No, nah, fair enough. But I guess technically you have to make your choices, and the Miz is an easy person to 
oh, make absolutely. look bad because of how good he's mm-hmm. looked from Baron Corbin. Yeah. So they probably took the Miz TV segment and said, okay, that's good enough. Yeah. Which apparently, I guess this news came about today, or maybe it was just somebody posted about it, but apparently, you know, when the Miz started getting big uh, on his SmackDown Live run? Mm-hmm. where you Last know, year? Yes. Uh, apparently it was Jimmy Jacobs that was doing all the writing for him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not for him, but the segments that he was partaking in. So. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so up next, we got a Braun versus Kane package. Uh, yeah. Basically uh, everything that happened from TLC to now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, then we get Kane backstage, and he <laughs> said, you know, uh, what he did to Braun made him smile, and there's one thing worse than death, and it's me. Yeah. They I don't. Why are they building up Kane? I, look, I don't know. I hate <laughs> his mask. I really do. I wish he went back to the original mask. I I miss Kane when it's he just was awkward with a smile. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss the Kane when he just first got unmasked or original Kane. Yeah, those two are the best ones. Mm-hmm. Um, corporate Kane was obviously stupid. New mask Kane is dumb. Um, yeah. But, you know. Whatever. I guess, I mean, it's probably just his last hurrah. I guess. I don't, yeah, I don't even know why they went to that mask, though. Mm-mm. Whatever. Yeah. So, um, up next, we have the biggest moment of the show. Yeah, I would say so. The, the biggest uh, the biggest uh, story, mm. at least. Yep, so Kurt Angle comes down to the ring, and he has made his decision to replace Jason Jordan. Yes. Until Jason Jordan comes out. He hobbles down yes. to the ring. <laughs> Please don't do this. At least this time when he had help away from the ring with the referees, he uh, actually had an injury in his leg That's besides true. when he got hit with the guitar and he yeah. still needed help walking. Yeah. But anyway, so hurt. Kirk, I mean, uh, Jason Jordan comes down. I think, did he? when did he call him dad for the first time? Um, was that backstage was, when he was in the trainer's room? No, I, I, think, I think it was when he was in the ring with Stephanie. Oh, uh, was it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, he pleads to Kurt, please don't mm-hmm. do this. I can do this. Got, we got some emotion from Jason Jordan. Yeah. Um, and then Stephanie comes out mm-hmm. and, and basically tells him to hurry up and make the announcement. Yep. And, then, and then she left, right? No. No, she was still, oh yeah, she was still in the ring. That's yeah. right. Um, and then he's like, please don't do this, dad. Like, mm-hmm. like you had said. Right. And then, um, the game, Triple H's music hits. Yeah. And it was actually the game music. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the King of Kings. Nope. So at that point in time, I'm like, oh, yes. That means yeah. Triple H is going to replace him, yep. which is inevitably what Triple mm-hmm. H comes down. He's like, if you're not going to do this, I will. will. I'm the fifth member. <laughs> and he looks at Kurt and he goes, is that your son? He goes, yeah, and then he pedigrees him. That Kurt, was my favorite the, part. The, the crowd was chanting for... Oh, man pedigree the whole time oh as soon as he came out so like i had mentioned to you before we started the show that apparently jason jordan had found out the day of Mm -hmm. that he was not the going to be on raw yeah i mean on uh, team raw yeah so i mean you don't think that wwe was like uh, maybe we should uh reconsider what we've done here considering the backlash from the fans i honestly think that from the get-go there this was if this was going well, to be okay the it wasn't from the get-go because roman was originally probably the fifth person um that, i think that this was a possible plan because had you left put Cena as the fifth person on mm-hmm. smackdown having roman as the fifth person on raw would have made sense because, a little bit yeah yeah but I, I think that this was, at the very least, a possibility, mm-hmm. no matter what. Even if they... Oh, especially considering he's been working shows. Mm-hmm. So it's he's been obviously getting back into... Well, range, I don't think know. there's ever a point in time where Triple H isn't capable in, right. of returning. That's true. He's not Chris Jericho. <laughs> Doesn't need some <laughs> extra time. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, this is very exciting news that now yeah. we have a, a Survivor Series match where it, the average age is like 40 years old. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, Braun, the youngest at He like is the youngest at 34 years 34? old. He's I, 34? I looked it up. Crap. Yeah. Um, I think, honestly, the average age might be 40 yeah. because of the fact that Kurt Angle and Triple H are both 48. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, how old Shane? Shane 46? is 46. Yeah. And so. Braun is 34, Finn is 36, Joe is 37, mm-hmm. uh, Rude, I think, is 40. Yeah. Um, Nakamura's got to be 36. Nakamura is 37. 37, yeah, something um, like that. And Which then Asuka's the same or- age, Orton's I believe. Orton's 30, 
eight, I want to say. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Cena's 40. I honestly thought Orton was a little older. No, Orton's younger than Cena. That I that I knew. Oh, it makes sense because I think him and AJ started around the same time, but Orton was young, mm-hmm. younger. Yeah, well, because uh, Cena had been around, or he was in development a lot mm-hmm. longer than yeah, Orton no, was. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Anyway, old I, men, old men wrestling, mm-hmm. grappling, so much sweaty for, old uh, men bringing the uh, new talent into things. Yeah, you that's know, all right. That's it's fine. fine. It's it's a big it's a match. big pay per view. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I yeah this I, I don't even know if I would consider this. I mean, it obviously is their main event, but I, I think the Shield versus the New Day is. Um, that's the biggest story. Yeah. This is not no the main event's gonna be AJ versus Brock. Should be. Yeah. No, it's going to be. It yeah? isn't in the oh in the did thing. It? Yeah. Okay. Um, or I should say it's it's showcased as the main event in the list of pay per views. Okay. So, I, I I guess it's going. It should be. Yeah. Um. So it, honestly, I don't even think the this the <clears throat> Raw's men match deserved not deserved to be, but should have been. Mm-hmm. I think that the New Day versus the Shield match could have been the main event. Yeah, if absolutely. Want to go yeah. with? But the, but I mean this. This Survivor Series just shows you how stacked their roster really is. Oh, man. So big matches everywhere. Mm-hmm. The only match that could have been made better is if you had Rusev as the U.S. champion and have Rusev versus mm-hmm. The Miz. Yeah. That would have probably been a better a better fit. Granted, Baron Corbin is a great... But um, Rusev's been hilarious lately. He's no, been so good. But I'm just saying Baron Corbin's a better dummy to get picked on mm-hmm. than... Rusev. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think the Miz would have the build with Baron is better for the Miz than Rusev mm-hmm. would have been. Yeah. Although the Rusev would have fought back a little better. Mm-hmm. But because <clears throat> you got great champions for the women, got great tag team, um, and then um, the, obviously the world champion is a significantly better option than yeah than it was it previously was so which apparently I mean. It doesn't matter when we get into this, but you heard what happened with India? They oh, were originally going to have two one. shows, and now it's one show? Yeah. I mean, when TNA went there, they had to pay people to sit in the seats, so... Yeah. It, you know, I, I think the WWE just gets a little... Carried, too carried away? Yeah, they, they assume put, that they they're bigger than they are. They put everything into one uh, focus and yep. go with that. But yes, uh, I mean, uh, well, I'll tell you how after uh-huh. this. It, it's nothing. I was just going to say that... Uh, with the Sin Cara thing, apparently they are trying to move more into South America and stuff like that. And apparently he has a Reebok deal or something like that. Well, here's the thing. Traditionally, um, South America is big on wrestling. Yeah. India is not. No. So it's a lot easier to get over there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's good. So yeah. I'm just, it doesn't make any yeah. sense. Hey, whatever. It, uh, whatever. Let's let's not. We, we there's nothing you can do about it. Exactly. All right. So up next we got Balor and Joe versus a couple of good brothers. Yeah, I love them. They're the best. Yeah. They didn't they didn't do anything particularly special. Nah. This week, but it, it, knowing they that, got more offense than I had expected. Yeah. But just knowing that they're they're still good brothers. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. Yeah. And it's always kind of funny having Finn with interact with them. Mm-hmm. Cuz you know you know the they're how much they love each other. Oh yeah. So having them fight is kind of it's kind of funny. Yep. But uh <laughs> no surprise here. Joe and Finn go over. Yeah. Um actually at the beginning of the match, uh Joe had Joe, to show some dominance. Yeah, he just shoved Finn yeah. into the ring. Yeah. um and then uh <laughs> then they worked as a cohesive unit yeah they were actually uh teaming pretty well together yeah. and uh i think it was more of to show that joe is all when when he mm-hmm. knows what he needs to do he yeah. gets the job done right yeah so. i think anderson was down in the ring and finn was climbing to the top rope and joe just left the ring and started going oh, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. back uh-huh. finn hits the coup de gras and wins yep he's like oh, my my work is done here. yep carl anderson takes another pinfall yeah. time we need to, a counter time to go back to ca- <laughs> <laughs> time to go back to catering that's yes. what joe was thinking mm-hmm. <sighs> i've been sitting on the shelf for so long it's true the food is so good yeah. um then we get an alexa bliss interview with uh charlie i believe right yeah um it's obviously asking who she would prefer to face on sunday considering on smackdown it's going to be natalia versus charlotte yes um and alexa goes Oh, maybe this week I'll actually tune in instead of uh, putting it on DVR and forgetting to watch it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then she said, "Oh, maybe I'll show up and watch yeah. it in person." Yeah. 
And uh, then she says it really doesn't matter who wins because she'll show who the goddess of uh, WWE is. Yep. Um, was this the only interview they had? I believe the, the so. only actual interview because Kane so. had a backstage segment, but that was it. Yeah. Huh. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Well, th- that was the first time that I actually thought of it. Yeah, you didn't fall asleep again, right? No. All right. I was actually watching the whole time. Very good. All right, so up next we got the main event, Kane versus Braun. Mm-hmm. This was weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I get why they did it, mm-hmm. but we'll go through the match, and then we'll get to that point. What do you mean? We'll match. Okay. It wasn't the, a match. The interaction between the two big sweaty men. Yeah, so basically they both come out. They stare at each other. Mm-hmm. The referees just standing, standing there. there. Um, and then, well, who starts it? Kane punches Braun. I think so. And then so. they spill out to the outside. Mm-hmm. They beating the crap at each other. Yep. The match never actually starts. Goes to set up a table. Yeah, but they did set up a table, yes. right? And Kane was going to suplex, or was it Braun? No, Braun, Braun was, was going, going to suplex, suplex Kane, Kane, but Kane gets out mm-hmm. of it. And then um, Braun picks up Kane, hits him with a running power slam. Falls right through the ring. Yep. The old and, Taz and Bam Bam Bigelow yeah, spot. And that was how the show ended. That was it? Yeah. But I guess they wanted to have an interaction before between the two before we got an actual match. I don't know if they're... Well, I think they wanted to just... Build more? Yeah, because yeah. I, I think they wanted to come up with something that didn't have like a concrete finish mm-hmm. so oh yeah yeah and they didn't even looked, get it started there yeah. was no match so they both look good still going mm-hmm. into the and it really didn't matter how it ended um it's true this shouldn't have ended the show brock lesnar and paul Heyman probably should have ended the show yeah which is honestly something but, i never thought but I then would you say. wouldn't have been able to have this segment why well yeah because of the <laughs> the ring yeah, yeah. but m- minus that part i think that this was a very weak ending it that. was, but I mean, you had a packed show. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with no. Anything, no I but... get, like I said, I get why they did it. Yeah, but, but this this was a little, a little strange. Yeah. But it was such a strong go home show that it really didn't matter. It's true. And everything is now concrete or relatively concrete on mm-hmm. the raw side, and it, everything made sense. Everything was done well, so I, I really can't really complain about the build to. To Survivor Series. No, not at all. A pay-per-view that's generally not really considered a very interesting pay-per-view. No, and they made it a good opponent for War Games. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, actually, I was going to I was gonna text you last night, but I figured I'd just ask you. Do you think that they actually stand a chance now? I think, and I know I've said this before, but I honestly think that Survivor Series will be better than NXT TakeOver. It's it's possible. There's but, a lot of wild cards in NXT. Be, yes, because that women's match could be very... Like, I'm sure it's going to be pretty good, but yeah. it's not going to be as good as you would hope it to be. Just just based off You don't of, have Asuka there. Well, that... Um, you don't know how well Kairosene works with people that she doesn't really know. She's been working the house shows and stuff for a while now. But yes, yes but I, you get, have, I get what you, you have mean. three yes. opponents, one yes. of which is Peyton Royce... She has improved a lot. She is significantly better than yes. she was, and she's a lot better than Billy Kay, but mm. still. It's true. Um, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Almas versus. Uh, uh, I McIntyre think that match, match. is going to surprise you. It, it could, I, I but I just, so. I don't, I don't see it just yet. Is Alistair okay. Black fighting? Uh, Th- yeah, that match is, is going to be good. That, you sure? They've done such a good job building that up. I don't. I, I just. I That's do probably not, been one of my favorite I do not builds. Like the, I don't like the, the Velveteen, Velveteen Dream character. Oh, it's man. terrible. No, they've done so good with it. All right. All right. Okay. Let's 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 end this raw recap and all pick right. up the conversation when we do our predictions later. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, all right. So yeah, this was our raw review. Yes. Yeah, so if you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.